22nd of uh, Othaykel. Huge ring of people there this afternoon. It's beautiful weather, clear sunny days, beautiful valley. And you're in one of the sections uh, of the largest hydrothermal field on the planet. Uh, they're saying the caldera was about 30 miles wide when the last thing, time this thing blew. And you're looking about 60, uh, 650,000 years ago, I think. And they're um, sometimes a million years apart the major eruptions. But you can have semi major events in between that and it happened not that long ago in 1959 it was followed by another major quake in 1962 in alaska over a nine point but this is live again this afternoon guys think about the energy under here and what you're seeing again is the teapot setting on the fire effect you have underground water aquifers and below that you have in this case again liquid carbon uh, magma much more dangerous than normal magma. As you see in the highlight, Yellowstone volcano elevated earthquake activity during June 2017. Look at that. I think maybe 1,100 quakes. I, I don't remember the exact number, guys. And these events, these swarms, precede what's called geothermal explosions. This is very minor when you see Old Faithful doing this. But what has happened in 1959, going back, this is not millions and hundreds of thousands of years ago, guys. Okay? August 17th, 1959, a 7.3 magnitude earthquake devastated Hebgen Lake. Check this out, guys. In, uh, overnight, I mean, instantly it started filling up, and I think within the first 30 days, maybe 700 feet deep. Highways were wiped out. Bridges were wiped out. 28 people were lost their lives during a much different population uh, situation on, in our nation. And you can see the crowds there today, a complete ring. Now, these are pictures as the quake happened. Uh, cabins were falling off, highways were blocked, uh, the lake was filled in the top left there. But the stories that are coming out year after year of people that went through this is better than any earthquake movie scenario that you can imagine and the people that survived and their stories are incredible and i just want to point out you don't have to go back that far to have major geothermal activity here i'd like to read from the denver post about a couple of different people's experience that they went through in 59 as they were young and they were camping there check this out guys you're looking at an article in the denver post and it's talking about uh, remembering the 1950 earthquake in Yellowstone. And the, again, the reason I'm doing this is because so many people say it's been millions of years since an eruption. And it has been, uh, I think, maybe 650,000 since a, something major happened. But this caused 28 lives. It created Quake Lake. It created a couple of days of terror. It tore down highways. It dumped cabins into... This valley created a lake 700 feet deep within 30 days. That's not that far away. You're seeing a black and white photo, but there were yellow, um, excuse me, uh, color cameras in 1959. I know you don't think so, many of you young guys. But there were, and there's excellent images of the event. But what I want to do is read you an article about some of the people that were there, were trapped there, and went through this. And what we're dealing with, is a geothermal explosion, not a volcanic eruption that involves magma. But remember my last video about Yellowstone, guys, was that uh, it was not magma. It was uh, basically molten liquid carbon, which when that erupts, it there's so much more carbon pollution into the atmosphere, you create uh, extreme conditions, especially a what would be called a nuclear winter when the sun's reflected back into space and we're dealing with solar minimum and the approach of a mini ice age but there's been several hundred quakes in yellowstone this uh, year i think there were about 1100 possibly in june i haven't counted them there's a, a lot of them the strongest around a 4.5 which isn't like an epic quake but it was the strongest quake there since i think about 1980. Let's take a look at the article. Now, I've read a few different uh, people's 
uh, articles about uh, what happened when they were there, but this is Joanne Smith. She said she was 11 years old. The night she huddled next to her sister, mother, and dad as the ground shook and swayed. She heard the screams of people who had been camping at the Rock Creek campgrounds in Montana, just outside Yellowstone National Park, when a massive landslide roared down. It was frightening. It was horrible, recalled the Denver resident of the night on August 17, 1959. You could actually see the ground open up. It has been 50 years since the head of Jen Lake, an earthquake in which 28 people died. Seven bodies were recovered from the Rock Creek campground and two from the Cliff Lake campground. Nineteen people were never found in that landslide. In less than a minute, 90 million tons of debris uh, had moved and created a lake. Now, again, let me say this was a geothermal explosion. So what you're dealing with, you've got these uh, underground bodies of water. Under them, you have in this case, liquid molten carbonate. So you have a kettle or tea kettle of water sitting on the stove, and it blows its top. That's why Yellowstone is the largest geothermal uh, spot on the planet. So a geothermal explosion means that that water has become so hot that you have a bursting of the ground, you have major earthquakes, and you have hurricane force winds that are extremely hot. Think about that. So the Hedman uh, Lake earthquake was 7.3, which is a huge earthquake. And this was Mike Stickney, Director of Earthquake Studies at the Montana Bureau of Mines and Geology. In the past 10 years at the Earthquake Lake Visitor Center in Montana, more than 1,100 small and moderate quakes have been recorded. Guys, this article is older than 2017. We just had that many in, in the last month. It will likely occur along one of the 45 faults that line the two belts, one stretching from Yellowstone National Park up to Helena, Montana. Guys, in Helena, has seen the strongest quakes of this recent swarm, and a second one along the Montana-Idaho border. John Oswald of Castle Rock will never forget August 17, 1959. John, his mom, Dorothy, and dad, Terry, had been going to the Madison River for years to go fishing with Hank Powers, the owner of Halford's Camp, three miles upstream from the Rock Creek Campground. Guys, it's the same scenario that we've all seen our entire life. Our favorite camping spot on the river, lake, wherever it is. Just another weekend. He said, uh, after dinner that night, John went to uh, sleep on the screen porch of the cabin said he began to read before slipping into a sleeping bag as his parents slept in the two-room cabin. And I can relate to that on those warm evenings, that screen porch and a hammock or something is much better, or even a sleeping bag than inside. He awoke to his world coming apart. The shaking and the noise was horrific, said Owen, who was 15 at the time. I was just... It was just way louder than thunder, just one of the loudest noise I'd ever heard in my life. The porch split off from the main cabin. The cabinets spilled their contents, the ice box tipped over, and the doors jammed. Then powers came flying out of the nearby cabin, yelling that everyone had to evacuate because the Heg uh, Dam might burst. What happened, guys, he had the river coming down in that massive lake form, but this geothermal explosion created a massive wave along with that earthquake that breached the head of uh, Jim Dam. The people fleeing Halford followed a dirt road and crossed a bridge damaged by the quake. They drove to the highest point in the canyon, later named Refugee Point, where about 300 survivors gathered and spent the night. Let me say this. Uh, Population in the United States is a lot different than it was in 1959. Soon they realized that they and the 300 survivors were cut off. In one direction, the highway had slipped under Hebgen Lake, and in the other direction, where the slide had fallen into the Madison River, a giant lake was forming, covering the highway. They were trapped for 36 hours before being rescued. Joanne Smith, her sister, six-year-old Cookie, mother Ann, and father Lewis had been staying at the Beaver Creek ground, campground when the quake struck. The Smith family drove 
from the Hebgen Dan and toward Rock Creek Campground. When boulders blocked their way, Smith drove off-road and as far as the hillside he could. Then he told his girls and wife to climb, climb, climb. It was there, huddled and terrified, the Smith family dodged boulders from the falling mountains. You couldn't make a movie better than this. Below, they saw their cars swallowed by the rapidly rising quake lake. A helicopter rescued them the next day. In the morning, it was like we had gone to bed in one world, and somebody had picked us up and put us in a different world, said Joanne, who now lives in Denver and goes by her married name. Guys, um, 1959, that's not several million years ago, but think of the events, think of the population changes. But um, I, some, we had talked about this on the last show I had done with Paul Beglin, and there was a lot of questions, and that's why I wanted to go back and talk about this. We're watching it, guys. It's a heads up. Be safe.